Welcome to the AT&T Slam Dunk. This is what the crowd's been waiting for. We're here to see something we've seen before. Hey, Superman is in the building. Hey, this is poetry right here. Yeah. His first stop. Incredible. The artistry. Something to behold. Break it out of here. Take your jackets off. Let's go. That's what I'm talking about. Being a part of All-Star Weekend is truly incredible. It's a tremendous honor to be able to compete in the dunk contest with such a historic legacy of incredible dunkers. I get to be a part of something so cool that I've watched and loved. It's a time in my life I know I'll never forget. I'm truly blessed, and I'm excited for what's to come. On this night, legends are born. It's going to get exciting now. It's going to get exciting now. So get ready for a show. A lot of dunkers that inspired me growing up. I think, obviously, the Jordan. Hey, Vince Carter. It's over, ladies and gentlemen. And then Aaron Gordon, Zach Levine. That's a 50. Oh that's a 60. God. Exclamation point on the contest. Just guys being able to dunk has always been such a magical thing in my eyes. Some iconic moments that come to mind, watching my brother participate in it. Obi Toby came out with some creativity. Oh, oh well, well, the legs. That was absolutely original. When my brother won the dunk contest, I was jumping up and down. Some of his dunks that he did were um, insane. I honestly wanted to compete with him, but we didn't get to do that, so maybe one day in the future we can. Mac McClung, defending champ. I've been pretty impressed by his dunking ability ever since high school. First G League player to be in the slam dunk competition. Mac McClung was just unbelievable. That's a 50. Like, he got better each round. We have witnessed a star being born tonight. I mean, he's the real deal, man. Oh, it's over. It's over. I just remember it going by so fast. Just the relief of making that first dunk. For that one to go down and people appreciate it the way they did, that was one of my favorite moments. He's the star of stars tonight. Matt McClung has saved the dunk contest. There's a certain level of pressure to repeat and, and win again. Everything I do is because I genuinely love to do it. I think what it's going to take to dethrone him is some creativity, a lot of love from the crowd and the judges. We'll see. If I was to win again, man, I don't even know. I would just I would just have to let you know in the moment because I'd probably be breathtaking. Here are the competitors for Saturday night. Oh, he almost pulled the roof down. I had to grab. So tight. Alley oop to top it. We're going to see a show this weekend. I definitely have something planned that's going to put me in legendary status. I have maybe two dunks that I'm really excited about. I've never seen them done before by anybody. And we'll see if people like it or not. I think my creativity is going to be the one that separates me. For me to win the 2024 dunk contest, it would mean a lot. Having two brothers win it, I think that would be the first. One thing, I could check out the bucket list, go home with a big trophy, and celebrate my birthday on a high note. Ahead of All-Star Saturday night, AT&T provided NBA fans with the opportunity to meet and take pictures with tonight's AT&T Slam Dunk participants. Stay tuned for AT&T Slam Dunk later tonight. Uh, on the subject of dunking, uh, Dr. O'Neill, would you consider yourself to be the most powerful dunker of all time? Of course. <laughs> with Ooh. no hesitation. No, who no else? Hesitation. Who else would Ooh. be in the conversation? Sean Kemp. Yeah. Who else? Daryl Dawkins. Yeah, Daryl Dawkins. Dawkins. Yeah. You and Daryl Dawkins broke backboards. So who else? I, I, well, no, I, I don't. Well, first of all, Daryl Dawkins broke backboard. Yeah, he, he broke backboards too. No, he it collapsed, didn't it? Well, that same no, but he, he, no, know. he did both. He's, he's broken back. He started running. <laughs> he's broken get. backboards and he's and he's. No, uh, hey, Daryl. He's, he's even broken Darryl. stanchions. Sean before. Kemp. I would put you and Daryl Dawkins as the most. Vince powerful. Carter had had a lot of power too coming down the middle. Yeah, well, Vince Carter was incredible. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, if it is indeed you, our uh, our team uh, put Shaq's strength under the microscope in the first episode of the lab. Check this out. The last time we saw a true backboard breaking dunk was in 1993 when a 21 year old Shaquille O'Neal did this and forced the league to literally shack proof the hoops in every arena. So on this episode of the lab, we're asking how much force does it take to be like Shaq and bring down an NBA backboard? To find out, we're going to test hoop configurations from three different eras of the NBA. The afro, the booty shorts, and the baggy shorts. 
Using a G-Force tracker to calculate impacts, we're gonna drop different objects on each configuration to find out how much force they take to break. We started with the fixed back rim, like what Daryl Dawkins used to snap in the 70s. All right, bowling ball test three, two, one. And we were able to break that off with about 600 pounds of force. Oh my God! Which is what it feels like to get cracked in the jaw by a heavyweight boxer. Then we move to the 80s era breakaway rim, which can bend. This extends the duration of a collision and helps it absorb force. Here we go. That one took 1,400 pounds of force to Shaq. But in 93, Shaq didn't just snap a breakaway rim. He snapped the hoop's steel frame. So to find out how much force it takes to do that, we swapped out the glass for a bulletproof polycarbonate backboard, which will hopefully allow us to break the stanchion without busting the rim. Polycarbonate backboard in three, two, one. The goal is to bring down this 90s era goal, but turns out that, that ain't easy. We had an entire D1 starting five hang on the rim. Go. All right, next guy, go. Next guy. Next. One more, see what happens. Come on, hold on, baby. We even dropped a 300-pound refrigerator from 20 feet up. Three, two, one. And while it looked pretty in the air, no matter how many oversized bricks we chucked up, there we go. Still not broke. The stanchion wasn't budging. So to match Shaq diesel power, we brought in a diesel truck. We rigged the goal with high-tension cable and used a 2,000-pound weight as a pivot point. Three, two, one. All right, here we go. And get this. Once we got going, our heavy-duty rigging cord snapped before the hoop did. But after wiring it up again... Here we go. We were able to structurally damage the goal with about 4,000 pounds of force, which, for perspective, it would take the entire Lakers roster and most of their coaches sitting on the stanchion to produce the same amount of force. So how did 21-year-old Diesel actually bring down the hoop? Well, the stanchion might have been compromised in some way. But even so, at 7'1", 300 pounds, and with a 12-foot, 5-inch max reach, Shaq may be the only and last dude on the planet who could pull off something that insane. I love that kind of stuff. I really do. And, uh, uh, you know, you know, know, I, don't, I think it's fascinating. Yeah, that that would be that. superhuman. Yeah. What? I'm not sure if I can believe that. What? Believe what? That would be superhuman. That'd Bro, be, you saw it. You don't have to no, 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 be The man said impossible. it was compromised. Yeah, compromised by my strength. <laughs> okay, you don't think okay. Maybe there was a little, a little something wrong. No, but because he no, did it was more it? than once. Yeah, was it? He did it more than once, oh, so it no. had to be compromised <laughs> in two cities. <laughs> no, was because it? Because he did it in Phoenix, and he Thank did you. it in well, yes. New the Jersey. I did it in high school. I, I, did it in, I did it in LSU. <laughs> we don't. No, I don't yes. know that the one in Phoenix snapped. I just know no, that it, it snapped. Right I just, there. I just know that it's, it's submitted right here. It was no, like, it snapped hey, I right there in half. No, this in one back. snapped. Yeah, it snapped at the top. Jeez. The other uh, one just uh, gave up. You know, <laughs> you know what's crazy? You could have killed people. Well, like really? You could well, have, like uh, that, that's crazy. Like, I you? don't know if it would have killed him. It would have knocked the hell out of him. No, he, no that, him. if someone was underneath that, yeah, was good. won't you lose? Did I try to do that? Yes. Yeah, well, you weren't trying to do that. First of all, I'm not talking to you. Yes, I you Yes, I you were trying to do it. For what okay, reason? So, okay, so Derek Coleman was the only guy that ever dunked on me in the NBA. Only been dunked on once or twice in 20 years. I take pride in that. Unlike him, he's been dunked on a million freaking times. I only find one time Derek came down with the left hand and dunked on me and did like this. So every time I played, played against, I said to myself, you're never going to dunk on me again. And every time you're close to me, I want to dunk it so hard. I want to tear this, you know what, down. Yeah. 
and Dwayne Shinsis, rest in peace, University of Florida SEC thing, I was mad at him also. So to answer your question, yes, every time I dunk, that's why the dunk man emblem, I try to get my legs up because that brings more centrifugal force. Oh, thank uh, you, Dr. Ronier. Uh, yes. Okay. So that's what, what did you call what fatness. Is, what is that? What did so it feel take like? Shots. What did it feel like to do that and to hear the crowd reaction? I was trying to be like Daryl Dawkins. You know, when he did it the, the first time, and, and you know, when I started doing it in high school, getting my legs up, I, I saw that people would be scared, you know, they would be fearful, and I just wanted people like you and Bill Rafferty and Dick Vitale to say my name, because I knew <laughs> no other big guys were doing it, but I was definitely trying to, you know, tear the rim down. Uh, it was uh, amazing to see, and you were just trying to get the heck out of there, weren't you? Yeah, yes, you was. Hey, you so when you said, that, my nickname for you, you start putting that on your shirt, huh? What? Huh? You know my nickname. I call you Big. Bro, when you start getting you that, did, that's you're not the Chuck, first Chuck, person Mike. to call him Big. I, I, no, I, I, I call him. That's my nickname. Everybody but. calls him. No, no, they no, they yes, don't. Everyone calls him. Yes, they do. What are you talking about? Chuck, all the Lakers. Stop drinking that damn Redmond vodka. Hey, Big. Dennis Scott. Oh, they would call him Big in Orlando. Hey, listen. Shut up, man. I'm talking to Shaq. Hey, man. Try to make something up. Hey, man. I know. Is your beard ever gonna come all the way? <laughs> All I know. Ernie, yeah, I love, I love that, that's actually Ernie. That's actually Ernie right that there. That was science, Under, Ernie. I he actually, never had that hair, though. I'm actually horrible at science. I just like that science. Uh, and, and by the way, you know what? I'm the only person in the world who calls you Chuckster. Uh, I didn't realize that, too. Yep. Oh, Roy Green <laughs> called me Chuckster. No, I'm kidding. Oh, okay. okay. It's like big. Hey, speaking of big. How do you say you're late in French? Victor <laughs> Wembanyama. <laughs> It's going to be in the skills tonight, and he's going to join us at some point. I can't wait to meet. I can't wait to meet. Oh my God! Two and a half hours. Talk about absolutely nothing.